So my passion in, in philosophy revolves around what I call classical philosophy, i.e. Um, ancient Latin Greek philosophers plus modern exponents, plus medieval, plus early modern, and even in, in, into today's age. Basically, people that are in the classical tradition of philosophy that goes from Plato, Aristotle, Plotinus, then in, in Arab world, Avicenna, Averroes, of course, in the medieval world, in the early modern world, up to like Leibniz, essentially, who is like one of the, the last classical philosophers, Samuel Clark, Christian Wolff, etc. Um, that's sort of my 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 milieu philosophically, and one of the things that I got most interested in when I so when I left that world and I, I got into more of a media and sort of pop culture type space in my in, in my day to day work, I put all that stuff behind me and I didn't really get involved with philosophy for a lot of years. Um, I got a degree in, in philosophy in, uh, in college, a Bachelor of Arts, uh, in any case. So in over the last year or so, I've been getting back into it a lot, uh, rereading the classics and all the materials, getting really over the last three years, uh, getting in touch with the, with the professors, reading all the books again. And one of the most interesting topics for me has become natural law in the sense that it, it seems to answer the question that I'm trying to answer, which, or, or, or find answers to, which is the question that I'm trying to find answers to is um, what, you know, within the classical tradition of ethics, there is, there is a very strong assertion of the objectivity of morals, objectivity of reality, objectivity of knowledge, and also the objectivity of ethics and morals. And um, especially in light of criticism of that perspective, in, in modern philosophy, especially, but really as far back as Hume, and then and then etc. Um, I've gotten back into philosophy as a, as a, as an interest, and this was the question that I've been looking to answer quite a bit. And um, the more I've been digging into natural law as a, as like a tradition within classical philosophy, the more I realized that it's basically the answer to that question of what is the grounding for ethics to make them objective. Um, and the sort of the, the, the pinnacle writer and thinker in that is Grotius. So I've been reading a lot about him, a lot about scholastic medieval philosophers, a lot of uh, people that have followed Grotius, Pufendorf, uh, and then the whole accessory movement around that in early modern Europe, uh, you know, John Locke, uh, a little bit of Hobbes, Samuel Clark is a big one, Christian Wolff is a big one. So, and of course, Gro um, Leibniz in interfaced a lot with Grotius, actually. Uh, so, Grotius is one of the people that I really want to understand on a deep level. And in general, natural law is, is a field that I really want to, to, to sort of develop on a big level. Um, and, and in some ways to make it more, more culturally available. And I, I don't want it to be trapped in an academic cloister any longer. I'd like it to be something that is more pop culture available on YouTube in a podcast format. Uh, maybe I'll write something myself one day once I become knowledgeable enough about it. Maybe I'll pursue even a PhD on either classical philosophy overall, or maybe in particular on natural law as a, as a subtopic in that. So I've got a, a tremendous level of interest in natural law, not only um, sort of the, in, the, in how, it, how it's instantiated with Rhodius, but also its predecessors in the medieval scholastic tradition, the successors, but also really in the ancient classical Roman and Greek world, uh, and Greek worlds, uh, because I've discovered that natural law as it functions in Cicero, in Seneca, in Epictetus, and, and even you know before that in, Z in Zeno and, and like Cleanthes and Chrysippus, all those guys, um, it was very functionally useful and satisfactory for an ethical objective that later became something Grotius seized upon. So really the entire 2000 year history of natural law as a tradition uh, 
is something I'm very fascinated with and something that I think could have a lot of purchase in the pop culture today because there's a tremendous amount of search today for certainty, for objectivity, for answers, for clarity, for meaning almost on a psychological level, for, for discussions on nature, on human nature, all the things that Grotius really tapped into, I think those are, are really suitable for a wider audience. And so one of my major two focuses, apart from my day-to-day full-time work, will be philosophy and in particular natural law. And uh, I think that's a very fertile discussion for today's age.